Okay, so I'm working on pulling the water line in from the house here and I want to pull it all the way out in the pasture so I can have uh, get a watering trough and it's it's going to be centrally located. All my paddocks are attached to it so I only need one water setup. Um, I got 500 feet of three-quarter um, PEX tubing that I plan on pulling in. Um, I got a, a chisel plow or a subsoiler, it depends on what you want to call it. I bought this because I was planning on doing some uh, some contour plowing, um, key line plowing. And uh, what I did was I drilled a hole right here, right behind the, uh, the actual chisel. So when this goes through the earth, it creates a channel. So this should be pulling through a pretty big channel underground. So I'm hoping it doesn't have too much friction and pulls in pretty easy. And I already, I already dug this. I already, I already took the machine over this and all the way out to where I want to go once. So it's already kind of plowed up. Um, so I'm hoping the second time it pulls a little bit easier and I can go a little deeper. I was getting up to about here. So as you can see, that's, you know, it's more, than, it's more than a foot. So you know, maybe maybe 14 or 16 inches deep, which I think will be, it's well past the frost line here. I mean, you can put a shovel in the ground year round here in Tennessee, pretty much. So I'm hoping this uh, this will pull in real easy. I got it stretched all the way down, kind of along the fence and all the way into the lower field. And I'm hoping it, hoping it pulls in real nice. So here we go, we're gonna give it a whirl. Well, the uh, Kellum's grip ripped apart about halfway through the pole. I'm thinking what it was is the hole I drilled. Um, there's some sharp edges on it, and you know the it's it's kind of rocky here, and the rocks might have shoved the uh, the cable part of the Kellum's grip into the sharp edges and causing it to cut through. So I kind of I went through the hole a couple times with some high tensile fence wiring. And put a carb in her and then kind of remade up the uh, a loop on the the Cullum's grip as best I could and uh, we'll see if that pulls it the pipe staying in the ground it's it's sliding pretty good it's just uh, it's a little muddy yet so I'm kind of churning up mud with the tractor tires and uh, I'm hoping that that was it that was it, that it was the rocks that cut through the Kellum's grip and it's it's not that the Kellum's grip is not handling the weight. So we'll see. I'm gonna try to yank it with this on here and see how far I can get. Like I said, I'm about halfway, so we'll give it a whirl. Well, my rigged up Kellum's grip worked just fine, but uh, it uh, ripped the pipe in half now. So I think the problem is, is pulling around this big curve here. There's a big curve, it goes all the way over towards the house. I think that's just putting too much friction into the pull. And if it was a straight run, I could have got a full, full pull out of it. So it was continuous the whole way, but I just don't think that's in the card. So I'm gonna have to splice it underground, which is not exactly what I wanted to do, but It'll still work. Um, so what I did is I cut the pipe over by the house and dragged the end over here, and then I hooked up to the hooked up to the tractor again, and I'll come over into here and start my pull again. So I can uh, hopefully the rest of this is pretty straight, and I'm like I said I'm about halfway done. So I'm hoping it'll pull the rest of the way. And I've been through this ground with the plow twice already so it's broken up pretty well so I'm hoping I can make it there without any more splices so that's how it's going well it didn't go as easy as I hoped it would but when does it ever um, I'll have to make a splice right here I got just a little bit left extra the rest is over in the water over there and once once I was pulling straight it, it went in pretty easy it was uh it was not too bad at all. Uh, it's, got, it's down 
it's I had the thing pretty much buried all the way in the ground. It, it went down real deep, so I'm thinking it's probably 14 or 12 inches deep at least, which is I think more than good for here. I don't think the frost ever really gets down more than a couple inches here. And I was able to make it all the way over. I'll probably have to bring the bulldozer in to clean this up though. It made it more of a mess. Because I did make three passes through here. Just because, I mean, you can see the clay and rock. It's, it's pretty hard stuff. Even though it's, even though it's wet right now, it still was pretty hard to get through. And my, uh, my rigged up Kelms grip held together. And we're at the end. And this is where, right where I'm going to put my water system. And it's, it's centrally located. I mean, every swale in this field is attached to it via the laneway. And then up here. So all I got to do is control where the animals can't go, really. And then they can decide to go the only place where there's food and water. And then this whole field here is also attached to this location. And since these trees shade this out and you never really get the greatest grass under here anyway in the summer, I'm making this kind of central area, um, the uh, a loafing area and kind of a sacrifice mud area because it'll save it's not really high quality pasture here under these huge trees anyway, and it'll save the rest of the pasture from getting really muddy, you know, during the mud season, which is, you know, we have we have four seasons here in Tennessee. It's uh, June, July, August, and mud season. So that should uh, that should that should water all my animals. And I got just one pipe to the house, spring-fed clean water. I just got to get a I'll probably get a 110 gallon tank. And the valves and you know all the bits and bobs of plumbing that's needed and I'll be ready for grazing you know after the fence is in so there's my water system install uh, enjoy <laughs>